الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يديه الساعة من يتعي الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعسي الله ورسوله فإنه لا يذر إلا نفسه ولا يذر الله الشيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected listeners in about a week's time the month of Rajab will start Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balikna Ramadan O Allah bless us in the month of Rajab and bless us in the month of Shaban and make us see the month of Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those this dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his blessed companions used to prepare for the month of Ramadan with the advent of the month of Rajab. Because the month of Ramadan, our minds will not comprehend, cannot imagine the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised in the month of Ramadan. Inshallah, we'll start talking about that to prepare for the month of Ramadan. Today, I will just focus on the few of the many, many, many benefits, physical benefits, fasting provides to the believers. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, O Prophet of Allah, in fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, O Aisha, Knock persistently on the heaven's doors. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, O Prophet of Allah, how do I knock persistently, continuously on the doors of heaven? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, through hunger and thirst. The most beloved servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most beloved servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment are those who hunger the most and those who worship the most to Allah's pleasure. And the most loathsome and detestable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who eat a lot, sleep a lot and drink a lot. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the worst container the son of Adam can fill is his or her belly. Eat only which can keep your back straight, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Eat only that much which can keep your back straight. If you cannot do that, then fill your stomach one third with food, one third with water, and leave the remaining one-third for breathing. In other words, leave it empty, the one-third portion of your stomach. The first innovation, the first bid'ah that came into the lives of the Muslims after the death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the first bid'ah, the first innovation that came into the life of the Muslims is after the death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they started eating to their fill and when they started eating to their fill their hearts bolted to the worldly material things to the attraction of the worldly things during the time of one of the most famous Khalifas Abbasid Khalifas Harun Rashid Rahmatullah a famous 
Christian doctor of the time and a priest at the same time, he comes to Hazrat Harun Rashid and he says, I have read a lot about Islam. Does your Quran talk anything on the human health perspective? Harun Rashid asks one of the scholars sitting near him, he says, could you answer his question? The scholar stands up and he says, yes. Our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kulu, washrabu wala tusrifu, eat and drink, but don't overdo it. Do not overdo it, do not overeat and overdrink, and do not be extravagant. The doctor and the priest says that is amazing. This is one of the key elements for a human being to maintain good health. And then he says, did your prophet teach anything about from the human health perspective? And the same scholar says, yes, our prophet taught us three things. Our prophet told us to give the stomach what it needs. Our prophet said, the stomach is the source of all diseases. In other words, what we eat defines the profile of our body. Number two, give your stomach what it needs. If the doctor tells us to stay away from fatty, oily foods which can increase, already increase cholesterol in our bodies, we need to listen to the doctor's advice because that's what our body needs to stay away from that kind of foods. If the doctor says you have very high blood pressure, stay away from eating, excess, eating from extra salt. The body needs to be deprived of the salt at that time. Extra salt. If a person has type, if a person eats a lot of sugar, his body can become type 2, type, type two diabetic. So give the stomach what it needs, the second thing Prophet ﷺ told us, the scholar says. And the third thing our Prophet ﷺ told us is, prevention is khayrun min ilaj. The prevention is better than cure. The Christian doctor and the priest says, this is so amazing. If a human, this is, these are the key elements for a human being to maintain good health. Harun Rashid Rahmatullah was a habit to sit in the company of the scholars, to build universities, to build educational institutions and infrastructures related to education. Because at that time the education in the Muslims' lives peaked. At one time he invites four of the best doctors living in the land at that time. A doctor from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan region. A doctor from Greece a doctor from Persia, Iran, and a doctor from Arabian Peninsula, the smartest of them all, at that time, among, those, among the four. And then he asked the four doctors, tell me about a medicine that does not have any side effects. The doctor from the Indian subcontinent, he says, black my myrobolin, it's a herb that grows in that region, which treats the diseases, which treats uh, various ailments and he asked the Greek doctor and the Greek do doctor says Narcissusium cress which treats the ailments of the stomach and leprosy and then he asks the doctor from Persia and the doctor from Persia Iran he says you should drink hot water and then he asks the doctor from the Arabian Peninsula Tell me which medicine you take that does not have any side effects. And this doctor from Arabian Peninsula says, the best medicine that does not have any side effects is you eat when you're hungry. And then you stop eating just before you're full. Few bites before you're full, you stop eating. That is the best medicine you can take without any side effects. Harun Rashid Rahmatullah says, Subhanallah, this is exactly the teaching of Prophet Because it is written in the book, a doctor living in faraway land from the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula, he hears that there, is, there are no clinics in Madinatul Munawwara at the time of the Prophet. He comes, packs his bags, his, all the stuff he needs for the clinic. He wants to make a lot of money in a city where there are no clinics. Expecting a lot of patients, his, 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 his practice to thrive. He comes and opens up the clinic and no patients show up. 
Nobody shows up except few people who are, who are hurt in battles and skirmishes that take place at that time. So after some time, he goes to Prophet ﷺ and he says, what is this? What is it with, this pe with the people of the city of Medina? Nobody shows up with any sickness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, My companions, my companions eat only when they're hungry. And they stop eating before they become full. They stop eating before they become full. The doctor says, if that is the case, I'm packing my bags, I'm leaving the town. Luqman alayhi salam used to say, to advise his son, one of, one of his Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah in the Quran, Surah Al Luqman, because Allah loved the advices he gave to his son. One of the advices, Luqman al Salam says, Oh my son, when you eat to your fill, when you eat to your fill, your intellect goes to sleep. Your ability to reason and understand goes to sleep. Your wisdom is silenced and the organs of your body become too lazy to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Sulaiman al-Darabi al al would say, worship is sweetest to me. Worship is sweetest to me when my, when my, belly, when my belly clings to my back with hunger. Never have I eaten to my fill, he says. Never have I eaten to my fill when the desire or the wish to commit a sin erupted in my heart. That is what eating full does, respected listeners. Eating to our full creates the desires in our hearts to commit sins. That is one of the reasons the prophets used to go hungry by choice. Prophet وسلم, would never eat to his fill for three consecutive days. He'd eat one day fast the other day, or he'd eat two days fast the third day. Smoke would not come out of the chimney of his house for two months, the famous hadith we know. Kitchen would not burn in our house, would Aisha radiallahu ta'ala would say, for two months. Then what do you eat? Oh, mother of the believers, people ask, she would say, Al Aswadain. Dates, black dates and water, she would say. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah alayhi, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah alayhi, for 40 years, it is written in the books, for 40 years, he prayed Isha Salat and Fajr Salat with the same wudu. Our minds cannot comprehend these respective lists because our eating habits are such. We cannot understand how can a man, for 40 years, without going to the bathroom, pray Isha Salat and Fajr Salat with Wadu because it was a healing, it was a healthy healing, eating habits that enabled their body to become so strong. Rasulullah, the prophets, Allah made them very strong. Rasulullah did not eat by choice. Yet he was a very strong person. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala would say he would wake up every morning like a lion. Like a lion, not depressed or anxious or weak or sad. Ready to take on the chores of the day. That is like you look. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anha, the most ahadith that came through his narrations. He would fall with hunger on the ground. People would step on his back thinking he's having bouts of epilepsy. But he would say, by Allah, by Allah, I did not have any epilepsy, any disease. It was the hunger that caused me to go, go down on the ground. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala is known to fast a lot. 25% of the narrations of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came through Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi, the most authentic book after the Quran, the book of Hadith by Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi. Somebody asked him, how, do you, how much do you eat in a day? He said, I start with a date with almonds in the morning. Twelve almonds. Twelve almonds are enough for me to, to, to suffice for the entire day. Twelve almonds. 
That is why if you look at the success of people who respected this Albert Einstein, amazing brain Allah had given him. What was his weight? What was his physique like? He was, a, he was an average looking thin man. I saw Steve Jobs like five feet away from me. He was staring at me where I was being escorted to the roof. To, I was going to check the antennas up on the roof of the Apple building in Mountain View. This was when he was healthy. He wasn't diagnosed with cancer or anything. He was about hardly five to ten feet away from me. He was walking in front of me. And he was staring at to me very, very frequently. Because my beard probably reminded him of his original, of his, of his biological father. He was, I was surprised to see him. Steve Jobs respected, listen, the one who revolutionized the world with the personal computers and launched the smartphone to change the entire world. Um, the people calling the modern day Albert Einstein. Amazing mind Allah gave him. I was surprised to see him. He was smaller than me and thinner than me, but he was healthy. The tiger, the king of the jungle, the so-called king of the jungle when he walks, Allah Akbar. Allah has put such awe and respect and elegance in his walk. It puts the fear in the hearts of the animals and the men. How much does he eat? Hunts once a week. Hunts once a week. Alligators, the longest living species among all the creation of Allah on the planet Earth today. They live 75 to 100 years average good life. How much do they eat? Once a week. One meal a week. Four, about four meals a month. 50 meals a year. And even if these alligators, if they take a tiger in their jaws, the king of the jungle in their jaws, the tiger will not be able to escape. This month of Ramadan, respected listeners, our bodies, one of the books, a, 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 an author, a man from Los Angeles, a book he wrote is called Cave My, Caveman's Diary. Something to the effect. He writes, a human body has been built to be food deprived. It was not built to overeat or to eat to our fill all the time. Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to say, Iyakum wa laham. Beware of eating meat. He said the addiction, the addiction of beware of eating meat, the addiction of meeting eat, the addiction of eating meat is as the addiction of drinking wine. That is why you eat meat, eat meat, eat meat once a week after he became the Khalifa. Sahal ibn Abdullah rahmatullah would take the students to his class. Only those students who eat meat who eat meat once a week. This author, the author who wrote this, this book, he says for a human body to remain healthy, it needs to fast one month every year. This is a non-Muslim doctor, American doc, American author saying a human body to remain healthy. They need to fast one, one month a year and fast two days every month. The advice of Prophet ﷺ. May Allah give me the understanding. May Allah subhanahu give us all the understanding. Aqulli khuli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullah li wa Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem Amma ba'd Respected listeners All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala If you look at our salat Five times salat Allah gave us Fajr salat only two rakat far Why only two rakat? So short and sweet for us Big iman like me Why so short? Because at that time in the morning the blood sugar level of a human being is very low. He can't exert himself much, much as soon as he wakes up. Then Zohar, when he has eaten lunch, when his stomach is filled with lunch, 
Allah's Prophet says, pray four rakat sunnah. Four far, then two sunnah. Fajr, two far, two sunnah, before two sunnah. When the stomach is full, for people like us, four sunnah, four for two, when the blood, blood sugar level has gone high. And then the evening, when we have digested, but we still take tea and snacks, four for of Asr Salah, three for then two sunnah of Maghrib. And in the night, when we have eaten a lot again, four for two sunnah, three with, when the blood sugar level has gone high. In, in, in the month of Ramadan, when we have eaten those dishes we haven't eaten the entire year, from Maghrib till Isha, we fill up our stomachs. All praises be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for fard to sunnah, 20 rakats of taraweeh, respectively. Or 8 rakats for sub, whatever is easier for us. 8 to 20 rakats. It's for our own good, respected listeners. Spiritually, we need to make every sajda, every prostration the greatest moment of our lives. But those 20 rakat, 8 rakats of taraweeh, why? From the physical perspective, our metabolism increases. Our blood circulation increases. The flexibility of the joint improves. Reduces the heart diseases. Reduces the stress. So many benefits and advantages. Gives us better focus, better sleep, better control on our bodies. And the list goes on and on, respected listeners. So it's month of Ramadan. Let's start fasting a little bit from the month of Rajab. Maybe a couple of days of fasting in the month of Rajab. So that the body doesn't get a shock in the month of Ramadan. Fasting suddenly after 11 months. Shaban Rasulullah encouraged us. Encouraged us to fast the 15th of Shaban. He used to fast most in the month of Shaban after the month of Ramadan. He would fast the entire month of Ramadan. But you would fast most after the month of Ramadan, that month would be the month of Shabbat. It's all for our own benefit, respected listeners. Spiritual benefits, Allah. Allah opens up the floodgates. But these are the side, side benefits, physical benefits which Allah, which Allah gives out of His wisdom. May Allah give me the understanding. May Allah give us all the understanding. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatun fil akhirati hasanatun fina adab al nar. Rabbana la tuzi kulubana ba'adid hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma. Inna ka anta al wahab. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'amu bil adli wal ahsan. Wa ita idhi qurba. Wa yanhani fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Fazkuruni azkurkum. Washkuruli wa la takkuroon. Aqimis salam.